So now on to the disassembly portion and showcasing of the actual PCB components. So I'm not an expert on identifying PCB components, but for those of you who can and are willing to, uh, I will be providing um, high resolution photos of the PCB as well as doing a flyby kind of, uh, here you go, look at this on video as well, you know? All right, so taking this apart should be relatively simple. Four screws on the back. I'm using a Phillips head zero uh, bit right here with a multi-bits tool set. So I'm going to unscrew this in a cross pattern. Okay, one. All right, that was two. And three. Four. All right, so before separating the car from the cooler, you want to take mental note of where all the fan headers are, where the cables are, right? So that you don't end up ripping anything out of its socket. Okay, so cables, fan cables are on the bottom of the card here. So I'm gonna flip it up towards that side. Okay, there we go. Just gotta give it a little pull. Okay. So for those of you who are interested, here is the stock thermal paste application. Honestly, very nice. Shouldn't want to replace the thermal paste on this. So let's remove these fan cables. You can use your fingers with a little back and forth motion, or if you have spudgers, those probably work better. I'm just going to manhandle this a little bit. Okay, come on. These are always tough to get out. Okay, there we go. That's one. Two, okay. Here you go. There's a little video view. So it looks like you got some tiny, tiny heat sinks over here, over what I'm assuming are the VRMs. Since so you got some inductors here. All right, so interestingly enough, you do have thermal pads on the video memory, which is really nice. So it looks like two of them came off and stuck to the cooler itself. No big deal. And these are, these are pretty thick thermal pads. I don't know if you can see the thickness, but there you go. The thickness of the thermal pads on the video memory. So they're probably made that thick to ensure proper contact. And this particular model has a Samsung video memory. Just because I'm curious, I'm going to take off and unscrew this heat sink. Yep, okay. So there is a thin thermal pad underneath it. There you are. I do want to see what's underneath here. So let's just take some paper towel circular motion okay so it is the ga 104 200 a1 there you go okay there's a shot of the gpu die and i suppose now i will just take off the back plate so the back plate looks to be held in by one two three four five screws let's find out All right, it just, yep, falls off. So the back plate, it's just plastic all around. This back here is also plastic. It's just made to look like brushed aluminum or brushed metal, but I think it's really just plastic. I'm guessing that's the part number. There you go. Okay, well, that's a little disappointing. All right, here's a uh, shot of the back of the PCB, for those of you interested. Let's move on to the cooler now. Okay, so these thermal pads, looks like they make contact with these inductor or these inductors and the capacitors here. So that's interesting. These caps over here though, no contact for them. 
only these and these inductors. So very interesting. As you can see. All right, so how do I remove the heatsink from the plastic shroud? Let's take a look. Some of them are screwed in. Others might just be held in by retention clips. What about you? Okay, so to separate the heatsink from the plastic shroud, there are, it looks like, four screws on the sides of the heatsink. So here's one of the screws, okay. Screw number two. Screw number three. And then screw number four is kind of wedged in between this heat pipe and the fan shroud, so it might be a little bit difficult to get to, depending on the size of your screwdriver. Hopefully I should be able to just separate it very easily, nicely. There we go. So here's a shot of the heat sink. You can get an idea of the thickness, the heat pipe arrangement. We got four heat pipes. Looks like uh, nickel plated copper, yes. So let's set that aside and take a look at the fan shroud. So it looks like you do have some cable management in the form of plastic, I don't know, notches along here. And then it really does, it really does just look like the screw is there for cable management. That is a very interesting choice. Um, I guess from here, let's just remove the fans to do a full disassembly. So to remove the fans, the screws are actually on the front side. So they're kind of in between the fan blades, which are uh, pretty hard to get to. Okay. So I think that's one screw. Yep, one screw. So that's how you remove the fans, okay? But I'm not going to fully disassemble the fans all the way because that would involve me removing the cable, taking the cable out. It'll be a whole ordeal. Okay, so you can take a look at the brand of fan they're using. Looks like the brand is PowerLogic, and their model is PLD110S12HH. And then putting it back together is pretty straightforward. You just do the reverse of what you just did. So I'm not going to show the reassembly. I'll do that off camera. Uh, but there you go. There you have it. That was the this assembly of this MSI Ventus 2X RTX 3060 Ti. Again, I'm going to include high resolution photos of the PCB in the description, so just make sure to check for that if you're interested. Okay, so now onto my version of a sound demonstration of this graphics card. So for reference, I'm going to be using an Audio-Technica AT3035 large diaphragm condenser microphone. It's positioned about three feet away from the computer directed towards my mouth. So this is one of the more sensitive types of microphones that you would use, so hopefully it'll serve as a good point of reference. And yeah, here we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the fan speed of the graphics card by 5% increments to let you hear what the sound characteristics are like. I'm going to let you hear what the noise floor is like currently. Okay. So do keep in mind that there may be some background noise unrelated to the PC fans and my graphics card fans.
Now I want to show you what the boost clock behavior is like on this graphics card. So we're running Borderlands 3 right now, graphics API DX11. Overall quality is the badass preset with motion blur turned off. So this is the highest quality graphics preset available in Borderlands 3. Okay, so as you can see, we are holding pretty consistent uh, 1935 megahertz boosts on the core. Okay, memory is not going to have any boost because it's just a stable clock. Um, GPU temperature is pretty, pretty controllable at around 72 degrees Celsius. And for reference, my um, ambient room temp is around 22 degrees Celsius. Right, so now let's move on to how power limit affects boost clocks, temperatures, and power consumption. So unfortunately, you aren't able to access core voltage nor can you increase the power limit on this card because of VBIOS restrictions, right? And yes, I do have unlock voltage control checked in MSI Afterburner. So I'm just going to go down by increments of 5% for the power limit, and you can just observe the temperatures and the clock speeds. 95%. Okay. It's just going to gradually lower. 90%, 85, 80%, okay, we're around 1845 to 1860 now, 75%, 70%, looks like the clock speeds are fluctuating a lot more. 7070 being the lowest. 1710, a lot of fluctuating now. 65 60%. 55%. And 50%. And then for those of you who are curious, here is what GPU power is reading right now in hardware info. So we're at about 100 watts for GPU power, and then you could read all these other values and interpret it however you want, right? And this is at 50% power limit. I'm going to increase the power limit back to 100%, and you can watch the GPU power spike to about 190. Next, let's move on to overclocking. So I did play around with some overclocking on this card and I was able to achieve a 180 core offset and a 750 memory offset. Okay, so here are what the boost clocks are going to look like after enabling this overclock. So it looks like I'm hovering around 2085 to 2100 megahertz on the core now and I'm sitting pretty at 7750 megahertz on the memory clock. And of course, this may not be 100% stable, and your mileage may vary. You may get higher overclocks, you may get lower overclocks based on silicon lottery. And just in case you're curious, here is what the overclock looks like with an 80% power limit set. So this is obviously going to lower the boost clocks. but it looks like I'm still sitting at around 1980, 2000 megahertz on the core. Well, that's pretty much all I can think of showing off of this MSI Ventus 2X graphics card. Uh, if you're looking for anything else in particular about this graphics card, I, I guess let me know. I'll try to help out, I guess, if I can. Uh, well, that's about it.